What's up, everybody? Ryan Thomas here live on the Thomas Take Sports Podcast. Big day for sports. A massive day for sports. Uh, obviously, with the UFC back, UFC 249. For those of you that did not tune in to my latest episode uh, featuring any UFC content, you were able to hear my fight picks for UFC 249. <coughs> As you can tell, over the last... A uh, few days, few weeks, I have had a very bad sinus infection. So uh, I have been unable to really hop on here as much as I would like. But uh, within the last few days, I've started to feel a lot better. And I really wanted to hop on here. I've missed being behind the mic, delivering sports content to the sports fans out there that are in desperate need of some content to tune into. So all that being said... Uh, I compiled a list, I compiled a team featuring players within the Buffalo Bills organization from the year 2000 and forward. Some of these players played for the Buffalo Bills in the first couple years of the 2000s that made this all 2000s Buffalo Bills team. And I think this team would have stacked up pretty pretty damn good, to be quite honest. Uh, looking at this team top to bottom, I like the team that I've assembled I like the team that I put together. I picked players within the Buffalo Bills organization that made the All-2000s team. So, obviously the most important position in the game today is the quarterback position. Um, I had a bit of a tough choice, really. Slim pickings, if you will, at the quarterback position for the Buffalo Bills, given that the quarterback position in the 2000s, Uh, has not been too kind to the Buffalo Bills. Um, And I thought to myself, thought to myself, well, okay, who would be the most obvious quarterback that that had some successful seasons uh, within the Buffalo Bills organization? And I looked at Drew Bledsoe. 2002 to 2004, he put up plenty of productive uh, seasons and he had one season in particular that first season with the Buffalo Bills in 2002 very productive over 4,000 yards got the ball to his receivers we'll talk about that a little bit later um, in the show and I have Drew Bledsoe as the quarterback one of this Buffalo Bills all 2000s team now who would be the quarterback two and who would be the quarterback three I have Josh Allen 2018 draft choice, 7th overall. Buffalo moved up uh, from the 20s to 7th overall, 22nd to 7th overall, I believe, or 21st to 7th overall. Uh, my memory is not good on that part, but they did trade two second-round picks with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers to acquire Josh Allen. And oddly enough, at that time, Tampa Bay had Jameis Winston. Now they got Tom Brady. Um, and the third quarterback... Deciding between Tyrod Taylor and Ryan Fitzpatrick, I had to go with Fitzpatrick. He had more successful passing seasons, more passing touchdowns, more passing yards, but with that, obviously more turnovers, hence why he is third string. I thought those were the three best quarterbacks that I could put forth on this all-2000s roster. Moving forward, what running backs did I see as the three best running backs that could possibly Uh, be on this all-2000s team. Fred Jackson, Buffalo Bills member from 2006 to 2014. Shady McCoy, a member of the Buffalo Bills from 2015 to 2018. And Marshawn Lynch, rounding out this running back trio from 07 to 2010. Uh, These were the three most talented backs, in my opinion. You did have some company in there with Willis McGahee. Uh, C.J. Spiller didn't really fit the bill for the Buffalo Bills, pun intended. Uh, on the you know docket, I guess you could say, looking at all these running backs, what running backs could I put together for this All 2000s team? Fred Jackson, the epitome of a true pro, really put forth a, a phenomenal career. I think you know in terms of recent Buffalo Bills players and and creating a case as to why they should be on the uh, proverbial wall of fame in in uh, New Era Field, I would say Fred Jackson fits. The, the criteria for sure and should be selected. Shady McCoy, LaShawn McCoy brought in in a swap that stunned the NFL world. 
Kiko Alonso was sent packing from Buffalo to Philly in exchange for all-pro running back LaShawn McCoy. And McCoy had a very productive uh, four seasons with the Buffalo Bills from 2015 to 2018. And and uh, last but not least, Beast Mode, Marshawn Lynch. Had it not been for the off-the-field stuff, some of the stuff that Marshawn Lynch got uh, mixed up with, I think Marshawn Lynch would have remained a Buffalo Bill far longer than what he did, far longer than the three, four seasons that he was here. So those are my running backs. Uh, Fred Jackson, Shady McCoy, and Marshawn Lynch. Wide receivers. Who better in the 2000s post-Andre Reed? than Eric Moulds in terms of Buffalo Bills wide receivers. Was a member of the Buffalo Bills from 1996 to 2005. And, you know, I look at Eric Moulds and and the career that he had. Could have been far better of a career had he had better quarterbacks uh, to play with. But definitely benefited from the Drew Bledsoe acquisition. Definitely made the most of what he had. The real player on this 2000s team that I really scratch my head and I wonder, what if? What if this guy had a quarterback to throw to him? And in a small window of opportunity there, he he made the most of it. Lee Evans from 04 to 2010, a member of the Buffalo Bills. Uh, I look at his career at speed, unlike the unlike anything I've seen in terms of my Buffalo Bills fandom generation. Uh, was a true speedster, was a guy that could get open, was a guy that could create space, and was somebody that uh, was a deep ball threat. He caught uh, four 80-plus yard touchdowns from J.P. Lossman in a span of two years, Uh, and Lee Evans was a real one, a good soldier, somebody that went through a lot as far as being a member of this Buffalo Bills organization during some really trying times where you're undergoing uh, coaching changes, offensive coordinator coaching changes, and Lee Evans was a true good soldier. So uh, that's that's how I look at Lee Evans and his career with the Buffalo Bills. Uh, rounding out the wide receiver core, uh, Stevie Johnson. I only listed three wide receivers on this team. If you were to go you know, four wide, uh, I would definitely throw Peerless Price into consideration. Peerless Price had two separate stints with the team. I believe it was like 98 to 03 and then 07 to or 06 to like 08. So he had two separate stints with the team. I didn't have the exact years on the career of Peerless Price with the Buffalo Bills. But Stevie Johnson, what a gem uh, Stevie Johnson was. A, a seventh round pick out of Kentucky. Uh, really blossomed in Chan Gailey's offense when Chan Gailey was hired as the head coach of the Buffalo Bills. Uh, was really working his way up the depth chart. You go back to 2008-2009 when Terrell Owens was a member of the Buffalo Bills in 2009. He had high praise for Stevie Johnson at the time, and nobody even knew who Stevie Johnson was. And Terrell Owens said, this guy's going to be good. You watch in a couple years, and Terrell Owens was right. Uh, Stevie Johnson was a phenomenal player the few seasons that he was here. He was great out of the slot. That's where I have him listed on this all-2000s team, Stevie Johnson, the slot receiver of this all 2000s Buffalo Bills roster. Tight ends was the toughest position to fill out. Um, in terms of Buffalo Bills history, there, there really is not a lot to speak of in terms of quality tight ends. Uh, Jay Reimersma, 96 to 02. Scott Chandler, 2010 to 2014. And Charles Clay. And really, I mean, Charles Clay being in this, lumped into this, is, is kind of silly because he was highly paid and did not really fit uh, or fulfill, I should say, the uh, lofty, hefty contract that was given to him. Charles Clay did not make the most of it. Scott Chandler had a few good couple seasons with Buffalo. Uh, I remember most for the touchdown against the New York Jets that was actually in Detroit. It was supposed to be a Buffalo Bills home game at Newark Field, but there was a blizzard one of the worst snowstorms that we've ever had in 2014. And uh, Scott Chandler scored a really clutch touchdown against the Jets, and then he started shoveling the snow, throwing the snow over his shoulder. I really liked that touchdown celebration. So shout out to Scott Chandler on that one. The offensive line of this all-2000s Buffalo Bills team. Now, this is a portion of the roster that I really like, uh, featuring players that were all pros, pro bowlers uh, galore, and maybe even future Hall of Famers. Future Wall of Famers, I think you could say, too, for this Buffalo Bills team uh, in terms of this offensive line. Jason Peters had a four-year career with the Buffalo Bills, 04 to 08, uh, technically five seasons, um, was shifted from tight end to tackle. And 
Former guest on the Thomas Take Sports Podcast, Jim McNally, talked about that specifically on the show. You can find that on the uh, Thomas Take Sports Podcast, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, as well as um, YouTube. Jason Peters drafted as a, or selected actually, signed out of free agency as an undrafted tight end out of Arkansas, switched to left tackle, and has had a hell of a career. The only downside with Jason Peters is, he demanded a new contract. Buffalo would not give him that new contract, and he was sent back into Philadelphia where he spent the majority of his NFL career. Offensive guard, you got Reuben Brown. Reuben Brown, a member of the Buffalo Bills from 1995 to 2003, a definite cog in that line and would remain as such on this all-2000s Buffalo Bills team. Center, what an easy pick for this pick. This is probably the easiest lock of any choice on this all-2000s team outside of defensive tackle. More on that later. But Eric Wood lines up under center uh, at the center position, I should say, for this all-2000s team. Eric Wood was a member of the Buffalo Bills from 2009 to 2017. True longevity uh, as a member of the Buffalo Bills. Right guard, you have Richie Incognito. He was so good, he had two separate stints with the team. 09, he first became a member of the Buffalo Bills, then went to Miami. Uh, the Rams came back to Buffalo in 2015 and played here till 2017. His retirement left a massive hole in the lineup in 2018 uh, that was eventually filled by guys like John Feliciano and Cody Ford, currently the guards of the Buffalo Bills. John Fina lines up at right tackle, member of the Buffalo Bills offensive line from 1992 to 2001. And then we shift gears here on the defensive side of the ball. The defensive side of the ball, very interesting for this all-2000s team. I did have some tough choices. I will get to those when when they come. But uh, Aaron Schobel lines up as a defensive end for the Buffalo Bills. He was a key member of the Buffalo Bills from 2001 to 2009. Uh, the most obvious defensive choice in this uh, all-2000s team selection, Kyle Williams. 2006 to 2018, a member of the Buffalo Bills. Truly, in my opinion, I consider him the heart and soul of the team that broke the drought. The true heart and soul. You had players literally saying in interviews that they wanted to go to the playoffs for Kyle. Mainly for Kyle, for Eric Wood, for Kyle Williams. And the fact that they were able to pull it off and do it in Woods, ultimately Woods last season. And to pull it off in Kyle Williams' second to last season. uh, That was pretty special. Defensive tackle as well, you have Pat Williams. Pat Williams is kind of the um, glass-half-full player of the Buffalo Bills because he was here from 1997, 97 to 2004. I look at Pat Williams and I say, that is another player that I really wish Buffalo wouldn't have sent packing, but um, it's a business at the end of the day. Player demands the money, the team's got to meet it, and if the team doesn't meet it, the player goes to another team. And then rounding out the defensive line, I have Jerry Hughes. And you know, a lot of people that I talked to about this before I released this team, they really felt like I should put Mario Williams here. But uh, Jerry Hughes has had true longevity as a member of the Buffalo Bills, and that's kind of a recurring theme within the defense, at least the defensive line. Aaron Schobel, a member of the Bills from 01 to 09. Kyle Williams, a member of the Bills from um, 06 to 2018. Pat Williams, a member of the Bills from 97 to 04. Jerry Hughes, obviously a member of the Bills from 2013 to present day. That is the second member of this Buffalo Bills team that is an active member of this Buffalo Bills team. This all-time 2000s team. So shifting gears here to the linebackers. Who will line up at linebacker for the Buffalo Bills? Middle linebacker will be London Fletcher. And the outside linebackers will be Takeo Spikes, and last but not least, another former guest connection of the Thomas Take Sports Podcast, Lorenzo Alexander. Lorenzo Alexander, a former guest on the show. You can check out that episode as well on the Thomas Take Sports Podcast, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or YouTube channels. Uh, Takeo Spikes was a big addition to the Buffalo Bills. I remember that specifically being London Fletcher's second season. I did the research on that. I found out that I was right. Uh, London Fletcher came on board in 2002. Takeo Spikes came on board in 2003. That tandem at linebacker was very 
very vicious. Jeff Posey, a solid pass rusher, too, on that outside linebacker spot for uh, the Buffalo Bills at that time. Uh, Lorenzo Alexander, member of the Buffalo Bills from 2016 to 2019. I look at Lorenzo's career and say, what a remarkable journey he had coming from being a 320-pound offensive lineman to playing tight end, playing special teams, working his way onto a roster, and being discovered essentially by Rex Ryan. I don't think Rex Ryan gets enough credit for that. Rex Ryan found a fit for him on his uh, defense, and uh, Lorenzo Alexander made the most of the opportunity. He was a Pro Bowl MVP, uh, made a lot of big plays in the Pro Bowl, representing the Buffalo Bills. Uh, So I believe that Lorenzo Alexander belongs on this team just as much as anybody. So, Lorenzo, there you go. The secondary rounds out with Tredavious White, 2017 to present day. Tredavious White, the first selection in the Sean McDermott era. And Trey White, I would say, three, four years into his career, he's one of the best corners in the National Football League. Cornerback number two would be Antoine Winfield. And we have to say Antoine Winfield Sr. now because his son plays for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Antoine Winfield Sr., a member of the Buffalo Bills, from 1999 to 2003. And it's kind of a recurring theme with Antoine Winfield and Pat Williams um, and Jason Peters. Three players that Buffalo was forced to let go. Uh, Three players that probably should have been here a lot longer than they were. And three players that made the most of their opportunity while they were members of of the Buffalo Bills wearing wearing that uh, red, white, and blue. Nate Clemens is the next corner. He was a member of the Buffalo Bills from 01 to 06. Plenty of solid interceptions, plenty of pick sixes, plenty of big plays from Nate Clemens. I remember the Tom Brady hit. Tom Brady was really not really that, not really essentially well-known, was only known for being the backup to Drew Bledsoe. Tom Brady rolls out to the right, and Nate Clemens just levels him. Yeah, that was one of the hardest hits I've ever seen. So um, for that reason and for many, many more, Nate Clemens uh, belongs on this team. At fullback for the Buffalo Bills, people say the fullback is a dying position. I disagree. It's still out there. you still got some good ones. I got Larry Centers as the fullback of this Buffalo Bills roster. And, you know, shifting gears to the secondary back to the defensive side of the ball, um, free safety and strong safety, I have the best position grouping on the current Buffalo Bills roster in Jordan Poyer and Micah Hyde. There's no unit that is as cohesively in tune as Jordan Poyer and Micah Hyde. So those are two more present day members of the Buffalo Bills making this all 2000s Buffalo Bills team, Jordan Poyer and Micah Hyde. Uh, At kicker, you have Ryan Lindell who put together a solid career with the Buffalo Bills from 03 to 2013. Very, very solid field goal kicker between 40 and 45 yards. Uh, Beyond 45, there was a little bit left to be desired. Uh, But, you know, Ryan Lindell was here for a very long time and obviously was was consistent, was reliable. So uh, I had to put him in there. And then the easiest player to put on this team was the punter. And who better... As far as who is who is a better player on this team? Who who is better at their position realistically for the Buffalo Bills than Brian Mormon? I I, I don't see it. I I'm I'm having a tough. I mean, even out of all the names I've named in terms of dominance at one particular facet of the game, Brian Mormon was a stud punter for the Buffalo Bills from 2001 to 2012. And then again in 2013, he was cut in 2012, picked up by the Dallas Cowboys, finished the 2012 season as a member of the Cowboys, then went to the Pittsburgh Steelers as a off-season practice squad member, and then went to the Buffalo Bills for one last season. Out of Pittsburgh State, uh, Brian Mormon, two-time Pro Bowler, two-time first-team All-Pro, uh, and made the Buffalo Bills 50th anniversary team. But this team is is the all-2000s team. He holds the Bills record for the longest punt, 84 yards, netted 42,867 punt yards. Average punt, 43.8 yards per punt. So we go through the stats of this team, and we look at how these players were actually able to contribute for the Buffalo Bills and, and what led them to 
being on this all 2000s Buffalo Bills team. And I have to say, you know, Drew Bledsoe, for being only here for three years, that first season, as I said, he finished with a 61.5% completion percentage, threw for 4,359 yards, threw for 25, 24, pardon me, 24 touchdowns, 15 picks. He had an 86% uh, QBR, 86.0. Then really the next season, it, it took a huge step back. The offensive line was in shambles. Uh, huge step back, no doubt about it. Uh, only had 11 touchdowns and 12 picks. Then the last season with the Buffalo Bills, he had 20 touchdowns and 16 picks. So really, out of his three years, he had one really, really good year. But that one really, really good year was a really, really good year. 4,359 yards. He broke some of Jim Kelly's records uh, that season, single season. Um, he set the single season records for yards, attempts, completions, on offense that had seven other franchise records. So that's why Drew Bledsoe is the quarterback of this team. And then I look at Josh Allen and I say to myself, year one to year two, he's the current quarterback of the Buffalo Bills athletically. Uh, I, I would say he's one of the most purely talented athletic quarterbacks in the National Football League. There's a lot to like about his game and there's a lot to like about the future for Josh Allen. Uh, year one to year two was really seen as, as more of a running quarterback uh, had eight rushing touchdowns to twelve to ten. Pardon me, ten passing touchdowns and eight rushing touchdowns. Um, but this past season, he really developed as a passer. You saw it in the stat column. He had two thousand seventy four yards his rookie season in twelve games played and eleven starts. Um, and in sixteen starts, a full season, he had three thousand eighty nine yards, twenty touchdowns, nine interceptions, and eighty five point three QBR. Um, his completion percentage does leave a little bit to be desired at 58.8%, but that's where Stephon Diggs comes in. And uh, 29 total touchdowns, 20 passing, 9 rushing. You know that the guy uh, has the ability to make stuff happen uh, for sure. So I, I very much uh, look forward to seeing what uh, what he can do. He set multiple Bills franchise records as well. Most rushing yards by a quarterback in a single game with 135. Longest touchdown pass by a rookie quarterback with 75 yards. Most rushing yards by a quarterback in a single season, 631. Most touchdowns by a rookie, 18. Most consecutive games by a quarterback scoring at least one touchdown with 21 games. And most rushing touchdowns by a quarterback in a season with nine. Also most rushing yards by a quarterback in a single game postseason with 92, which was the Houston Texans game. So Josh Allen is literally rewriting the record books in terms of Buffalo Bills quarterbacks. Uh, and I know that the Bills franchise history doesn't really show plenty of great quarterbacks, but Josh Allen is definitely one of them that could really get better as the years go by. Moving on to running backs, obviously we got Fred, we got uh, Shady McCoy, uh, I really want to dive into both Fred and uh, Shady uh, within this, within this, uh, I guess you could say within this podcast, obviously. Uh, 2009 was the year that he really burst onto the scene for Fred Jackson. He had 1,062 yards. He had two touchdowns, receptions, 46 catches for 371 yards, Uh one year in particular that really jumps out at me was uh, 2011. 2011, Fred Jackson had 10 starts, 10, excuse me, 10 games played. He had 934 yards on 170 attempts, which put his average yards per carry at 5.5. He had an 80-yard touchdown, six rushing touchdowns, and over 440 yards receiving on 40 catches. Prior to that injury, Fred Jackson with Adrian Peterson was one of the top rushing running backs in the National Football League. And that was a uh, femur injury, I believe. So that was not one that was good to Fred Jackson whatsoever. Uh, you move forward into the era of running backs. And Buffalo has had a lot of great running backs. We were to do an all-time team. Obviously, Thurman Thomas and O.J. Simpson would make that list. But this is an all-2000s team. So LaShawn McCoy... Uh, I have him on this list, and you know, you look at his career, you say to yourself, maybe, just maybe, he ends up in the Pro Football Hall of Fame. Maybe, I mean, that would 
that would be pretty cool. Um, career statistics for Shady McCoy. Uh, obviously, from the get-go, he did have a hamstring injury his first season as a member of the Buffalo Bills. Still rushed for 895 yards in 12 games. He only did have three rushing touchdowns. But his second season as a member of the Buffalo Bills was one of the best seasons of his career. 2016, LeSean McCoy had 1,267 yards, the average yards per carry of 5.4, a long of 75 yards in terms of his touchdown run, and 13 total touchdowns, uh, 14 total touchdowns, including uh, a receiving touchdown. So 13 rushing, one receiving, and uh, over 50 catches. 50 catches for 30 for 356 yards. Uh, you know, one of his best seasons that he's ever had, and he had some really good years in Philadelphia, uh, 1,607 yards in 2013. He was phenomenal that season. Uh, but in terms of a career high for touchdowns, uh, outside of his time with Philly, that 2016 season with Buffalo was it. That was awesome. So uh, three seasons, four seasons, he was a member of the Buffalo Bills, two of which he had over 1,100 yards. So not bad for Shady McCoy. Not bad at all. If you really cut off that last season, he had 895, 1,267, and 1,138 uh, as a member of the Buffalo Bills. So um, not too not too bad. Not too bad at all. Poss- possibly a Hall of Fame career. One guy that I think will get into the Hall of Fame is Marshawn Lynch. Uh, you know, the, the 10,000 yards, all that. Um, you know, 2010's all-decade team was a Super Bowl champ, went to five Pro Bowls, uh, was the rushing touchdowns leader twice. So it's very tough uh, as to whether or not he will get in. But I look at his career, even from the get-go, obviously we're looking at his career with Buffalo here. But first season he played 13 games, still had over 1,115 yards, still had seven touchdowns. 2008, he had 1,036 yards, had eight touchdowns. And then obviously 2009, I believe uh, that's where things started to kind of go awry with him in uh, with him in Buffalo. Um, but two really solid years, uh, 07, 08, uh, that – you know, running backs in the 2000s, I, I don't think could hold a candle to. Maybe Willis McGahee should be an honorable mention on this team as well. Um, but I feel in terms of just skill set, I got to go with with those three guys. Willis McGahee had a great skill set, don't get me wrong. But I think part of it too is, is still my saltiness, uh, if you will, um, against McGahee for kind of throwing Buffalo to Toronto trying to that was not a good look but McGahee had over a thousand yards in two straight seasons over 1,100 the first year and over 1,200 the second year and almost a thousand the last year with 990 yards Uh, so in terms of production I guess you could say Willis McGahee should be on this team over Marshawn Lynch but I'm gonna go with Lynch I, I just like Lynch a lot better in terms of his skills um so we shift forward in terms of the statistics for Eric Moulds, and as I said, I mean, Eric Moulds had a great career with the Buffalo Bills, a phenomenal career with the Buffalo Bills. Given the circumstances, uh, he, he did as good as he could have, as good as he could have. And for a team that has taken so many players in the first round that haven't panned out, Eric Woods, of, or Eric Wood, I'm sorry, Eric Moulds, a first round pick out of Mississippi State, and he tore it up, tore it up for the Buffalo Bills. Um, the first season with Buffalo that I really look at for Eric Molds was that 1998 uh, season. Uh, 1998, he had 1,300 yards, nine touchdowns. Uh, 2000, he had 1,300 yards and five touchdowns. Um, then you look at 2002, which was Drew Bledsoe's first season. Uh, he had 100 catches for 1,292 yards, and he had a career-high 10 touchdowns that first season with Drew Bledsoe. So Eric Moulds, without a doubt, uh, cemented on this list as, as a reliable wide receiver one. Uh, Lee Evans, 
I'll go through the offensive players really only statistically um, because I know that those are the stats that people are really looking at. Uh, that was the stats. Those this this I expect will be what people debate. Um, maybe not though. Maybe not. But Lee Evans finished his Buffalo career with the third most receiving yards and touchdowns with five hundred nine. 5,934 and 43 touchdowns in franchise history, in addition to the fourth most receptions, which included six passes that each went for more than 70 yards. So, Lee Lee Evans, shout out to him. Next up, Stevie Johnson. Stevie Johnson, I look at as one of the uh, true unsung heroes of the Buffalo Bills playoff drought. He was a huge draft steal in the Buffalo Bills franchise history. A seventh-round pick selected 224th in the 2008 draft out of Kentucky. First-team All-SEC. Really, his career was somewhat cut short. I mean, he he had a career from 08 to to 2016, but I I felt like beyond Buffalo, you know, he kind of faded away. Kind of didn't really find his, his home after being a member of the Buffalo Bills. Uh, and doing what he did uh, for the Bills for as for as well as he did it, and for the few seasons that he did it, he had three straight thousand yard seasons. Uh, I believe he is one of the only Bills receivers to do that. Um, so it, it was definitely a, a hell of an accomplishment. He is the only. I was right. He is the only receiver in Bills history to record three consecutive thousand yard receiving seasons, and he really tried to work with EJ Manuel to get him up to speed. I also want to throw that out there uh, for the fans that might not know that. Um, but 2010, 1,073 yards with Fitzmagic. 2011, 1,004 yards and seven touchdowns with Fitzmagic. And 2012, 1,046 yards and six touchdowns. So three straight 1,000-yard seasons. Uh, he finished his career with only 4,606. 4,764, uh, but three great seasons in Buffalo. So that that's that. Stat guys in this league will look at London Fletcher on this team. He had some great seasons with Buffalo where he had over 150, ta- excuse me, 150 tackles. Uh, one guy that I really want to, that I really want to, uh, excuse me, zero in on um, is Aaron Schobel. Aaron Schobel, 2001 to 2009. And I believe that if you look at pass rushers within that time frame, Schobel had a phenomenal season in 06. He had 14 sacks. Since the 01 season, he ranked second behind Jason Taylor at the time of his retirement. Jason Taylor is in the Pro Football Hall of Fame. I'm not saying Aaron Schobel belongs in the Pro Football Hall of Fame, but he definitely belongs on the Buffalo Bills Wall of Fame. That's for sure. Eight, nine successful seasons. Uh, I think he deserves it. Um, so there you have it. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this episode of the Thomas Takes Sports Podcast. Feel like I got to get back on the grind here. I've I've been trying to uh, kick this sinus infection. Don't really feel too stuffy, but I feel like I still got some crap in my chest, which is always a pleasure. So, uh, everybody, thank you so much for tuning in. Let's go Buffalo, go Bills, and we'll be right back with more sports talk on the Thomas Take Sports Podcast uh, as far as UFC 249, which takes place tonight on ESPN Plus pay per view. Very excited for the fights. Hopefully you guys have enjoyed my all-2000s Buffalo Bills team.